In the previous video, I explained how schemas help you structure information. Their purpose is to help you build a coherent argument. We illustrate this with a cause and effect example. These are the first sentences of a paragraph on school leaders' response to cyberbullying. Hit the space bar to pause the video. The issue of cyberbullying could be approached from many angles. Here the authors have narrowed it down to the challenges posed for school leaders in the topic sentence. Then, the authors are citing sources listing the consequences of cyberbullying for students. We'll summarize those in the next slide. Now we'll focus on cause and effect language. These are expressions that establish a cause and effect relationship between facts or events. Examples of these are because, due to, result, the reason for, etc. Here, the cause and effect relationship is made explicit through expressions such as affect and obviously effects, but this is not always the case. This diagram summarizes the effects of cyberbullying identified in the literature mentioned in the previous section. The purpose of listing these is establishing the severity of the problem in order to justify the need for research in the field. This is a common move in literature reviews. Let's move on. Here, the author is explaining the reasons why school staff fail to intervene in cyberbullying situations. Hit the space bar to pause the video. We'll summarize the reasons in the next slide, but now let's focus on the language used. We can see that there is very little explicit cause and effect language. That is, no expressions such as because, due to, or the reason why. Except for this segment, making it more difficult to respond, the cause and effect relationship is rather implied. I will present now a possible pre-writing diagram for this section. As I explain the diagram, notice the difference between my spoken words and those on the screen. Putting your ideas in plain English and then translating them into concise, academic form may be a useful technique for paraphrasing. So back to cyberbullying. Teachers don't intervene in cyberbullying incidents because it's hard for them to tell bullying from regular teasing. Also because they don't know how serious it is. Or maybe simply because they don't see it as teachers rarely befriend students on Facebook. And finally, even if detected, they don't have the resources to investigate the matter. This section directly addresses issues raised in a topic sentence, challenges posed by cyberbullying for school staff. Here, the authors explain the causes of failed interventions. Hit the space bar to pause the video. We can see that again, there is no explicit cause and effect language to illustrate the relationship. The author points at the bullies' parents' attitude as the main cause for failed interventions by school staff. It furthers the argument by acknowledging that even attempts at solving cyberbullying incidents result in support for the bully and lack of justice for the victim. At this point, the reader should be convinced that this is a serious issue and that something needs to be done about it. This is the final sentence of this paragraph. Hit the space bar to pause the video. So we can see that the authors are clearly stating the need for more research and how it would improve the situation. We'll have a look at the whole process in the next slide. We have represented graphically each stage of this paragraph. This is something you might do during brainstorming. Now I'll summarize how the authors have structured their argument in outdated form. They have taken the problem of cyberbullying and narrowed it down to its challenges for school staff in the topic sentence. They have referred to sources to state the importance of the issue. Then they have listed the reasons why members of school staff fail to intervene or why their interventions are unsuccessful. And they have used this evidence to justify their research. This is a scalable process. It can be done in one paragraph, one section, or one chapter, or even number of chapters. Its length will depend on the depth that the ideas need to be dealt with 
and the number of aspects that need to be considered to establish the research gap.